आई नाउ रिक्वेस्ट ऑनरेबल फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर श्रीमती निर्मला जी टू एड्रेस द गैदरिंग नमस्ते चंद्रकांत दादा पाटिल एंड ऑल अदर डिग्नेटरीज ऑन द टाइस पुणे थिंकिंग एलिट इट विल बी एन अंडरस्टेटमेंट इफ आई स्टार्ट बाय सेइंग इट गिव्स मी प्लेजर टू बी हियर इट्स नॉट प्लेजर आई एम एब्सोल्युटली हंबल्ड बाय दिस Uh, institute every time i think about it every time my family has spoken to me about it and every time we recall the kind of contribution you have made not just for pune not just for maharashtra but for the entire country it's a marathon that you have done and i genuinely feel it's a historic service it's a service which cannot be compared with any other similarly placed institutions anywhere in the world i i'm not uh, exaggerating but the first for 48 years of absolute intellectual toil pulling through patiently and making sure that the board of scholars who were looking at mahabharata the various versions which were available dis, um, dissensions as they would refer to it but after that without losing any um, the spirit or without getting demoralized by the time which it takes to do such a mammoth exercise to come up with a critical edition is just the biggest uh, if you call there should be a huge obelisk at the beginning of or the entrance of this place worship worthy obelisk made of a single granite i would think because that is the kind of contribution you have made to a country which takes equally a lot of pride in the various versions regional variants and so on but actually what is it are there extrapolations which have to be removed are there any kind of overlaps which have to be identified without affecting the original's credible uh, wish that kind of work done over 48 years was of course released by dr sarvapalli radhakrishnan and i was just looking at the dates it happens to be 56 years tomorrow morning September 22nd is when I think it was released and what a coincidence that I am here but I repeat it's an humbling experience the endurance with which you have gone through that exercise and today anyone talking about mahabharata cannot but start with the critical edition so it's a fantastic uh, contribution and uh, all of us india in india will have to be proud that there is an institution which just kept doing it and reached that kind of a level and uh, obviously after that you also uh, brought in the critical edition of vishnu purana <coughs> mahabharata once in 1966 probably and then within couple of years the vishnu purana critical edition so this kind of a beginning for an institution in 1917 and carrying that tradition forward you've of course come up with the history of dharma shastra three fantastic uh, epics which have been redone in a way so the contribution of bandarkar is something which at least in my family family similarly placed like mine have all always looked up to so i am standing here in pune which by itself is a uh, 
flag bearer of India's culture, the contribution that you have made the city Pune and Bandarkar on its own. One can wax eloquent for several hours because distinctly the kind of scholarship that you have infused into the center. It's nice and uh, gladdening to know that today you have sponsors who have come in to give you that kind of resources with which you are able to pay better, reward scholars better. But between 1917 and till about 1980, I would have thought that kind of luxury was not available. But even in spite of that, the contribution that this place has made is uh, uh, naman worthy. I can't say anything more. What can really compensate for the work that it has been done? So if you made landmark contribution uh, in the 20th century, 21st century also requires your toil, your seva. And in that, you've already, within the first two decades, shown, and particularly in the last two very troublesome years, you have shown that you can adapt to the growing needs of the world. Scholarship is no longer just going to be confined to books and papers. People want it through the digital medium. And today, by launching this platform, you've done a brilliant work. You've just readied yourself for anybody who can access. I mean, that, that uh, uh, little metaphor which was used, if the well can go to the scholars, so should it. The it's no more bring the horse to the water. Now the water is going to the horse. It may as well drink it. So the kind of uh, foresightedness that you've shown and the young team which is uh, mastered not just using technology but has used it in a very constructive fashion for Indians to be comfortably accessing everything that which you had to run from one pillar to another post to search for documents. So it is one thing to have nearly 28,000 manuscripts which have been collected over the decades of century and kept in good, uh, safe custody. But now to be able to access it through digital means is something which is a great leap forward in being able to, sh uh, you know, share India's contribution to the global thinking. There are times when uh, uh, talking about the na new education policy, the national education policy, we are able to understand now we, we will have to now look at the way in which our own thinking, our own philosophy are all projected to our children, taught to our children, and also the way in which we are able to share further knowledge in it. The approach that was uh, uh, Dada Patil, uh, Chandrakan Dada Patil spoke about multidisciplinary. So have the credits obtained here, but also pass it on to the university where you're doing the main course is a very good step in the right direction. And uh, students should be encouraged to take up such courses so that once they are into their professions, they can pursue their interest. Today what we are seeing is many of the students, particularly uh, many in, in forces like organizations, excellent engineers, software specialists, cultivate an interest after they go into their professions that they want to learn Sanskrit, they want to know more about our Vedas, they want to access it, they want to have rigorous learning, they cull out time from their professional life and access and go in search of scholars who can help them do. But this is what is going to help them wherever, whichever part of the world they are going to be in. So the course will have to have both the credits for the young students for taking it as, as a part of the multidisciplinary learning, but also be ready for those adult learners who will actually have greater uh, intense learning drive within themselves. They are the ones who are going to be able to contribute because most of the time you find when pe a person comes on his own to have to acquire some specialization, he acquires it with such zest, which is going to be enabled by your portal. So I like to just underline the fact that the work that you're doing is of immense value for India. Uh, 
the reference uh, in several contexts to the Honorable Prime Minister's desire that we make sure that particularly when he spoke about uh, the Panch Pran during the Red Fort Address, didn't he very clearly tell us that we have to recall, remember and understand what is India's heritage. Forget and let it go, the legacy of the you know, rulers of the imperial days, but equally acquire respect and knowledge about all that is very Indian. In such a kind of a call, I find that institutions like Bandarkar are the ones who are going to be able to give us substantive content for the dialogue, content for everything that you're going to do in that regard. And the next 25 years, it can't just be it's part of the curriculum, so we've given one section, one chapter in our history books or one chapter in our social, sociology, but it has to be so infused into everything that we do, do, so infused into our education system. Because I think if you want to understand India, if you want to get a sense of India, if you want to literally feel the pulse and experience India, it has to be understood through understanding India's that unity in everything that has been developed over the century, whether it's art, whether it is architecture, whether it is your science, whether it is your medicine, whether it, it is history, whether it is your music, whether it's anything panning into culture. There is a sense of unity all these have grown in similar lines and therefore when you look at India, everything unites to give that image, that experience, that sense, that spirit of India. So unless we have this revived for those who are Indians but still who should get that sense, experience that spirit of that unity in every field which all of which actually uh, nicely uh, like a pyramid, go to give us the pinnacle which is the sense of India. And in all this, who can forget, and of course that gets reflected in Mahabharata and every bit, dharma is the foundation. That's the foundation of this ancient civilization. And I'm, I was so touched you gave me a copy of the history of Dharma Shastra. Everything that which actually is relevant for knowing or the, or the questions which are asked about human existence, the questions that are asked about self, the questions that are asked about self together in relationship with one another, or that one another can be single individual or a collective. These questions are answered in the context and in the frame of dharma. So unless that is understood, and that is not just a black and white. It sets also, and I don't need to talk before this uh, learned audience, but I'm just justifying the work which you're doing from the point of view of somebody who's outside of it and values the whole thing. So when you're really talking about that foundation for this ancient uh, you know, civilization, those questions being answered are universal questions. They're not attributable to one part of India or one part of Asia, but they are universal. Even today, people are asking questions about what's me, who's me, and what do I have to do with, uh, you know, as existing individual with the rest of them. These are questions which are there in everybody's mind. But of course, some of them are able to articulate it better and some others toil with it inside. But this has to be understood in the context of the dharma, which also sets a beautiful, you know, uh, range of things before us about the ideal, moral, ethical framework within which we all live. And it is again not black and white. That's why most people who talk about dharma start with a statement, it's sukshma. It's very subtle. It varies along with shades. So what is good today, Desha Kala, uh, what is good today may not be good tomorrow, may be good in a slightly different 
uh, shade and that is the beauty of dharma and that is why i think like no other code of ethics i'm not reducing dharma to code of ethics but like no other code of ethics you even have a apatkala dharma so it gives you guidance on everything that you can do at good times bad time trouble times challenging times when times threaten your life everything so when you're bringing out books like mahabharata you are actually highlighting the weaving in into every one's life a king's life an advisor's life a slave's life an adopted man's life the play of dharma and that is why when scholars look into it not just as a document through which very many of our religious matters have been discussed it's also a document which gives you in crystal clear manner woven into the experience living experience of individual how dharma plays out and how it either calms you down or makes you question yourself so when institutions like bhandarkar oriental research institution go into these details get it on online on platforms speak and write and convey in such language of today's youth in fact before coming here and one month ago i had listened to some of these uh, little podcasts that you have uh, podcasts or on the platform they are so very well designed you can just give your time listen to it and then go about thinking about it as and when you want and go back to it i praise and uh, put on table my appreciation for reading india's wealth in terms of our literature in terms of our knowledge which has been oral for a long time then got codified then got uh, into the form of uh, you know documents and books which you could publish authentically and today you even entered the digital domain and in such alluring fashion it's it's actually it attracts you to want to listen to it so all appreciation for the board members of bandarkar institute all appreciation for the team which has done this and all appreciation for people who support such an exercise they may have been disappointing or sad times when you think where are we going to get these materials from if we want to have some correction done to our curriculum that has never worried me as a person particularly because i've had uh, information knowledge being shared about many of our oriental institutions particularly about wonderkar so i'm so glad to be here today but every time i say glad or pleasure equally i say i'm humbled for the extraordinary work that you have done and extraordinary way in which you are entering into the 21st century this is a great service you've done for the nation as much as those scholars in various languages i know in tamil tamil wouldn't be seeing many of those uh, great literature from sangam era but for people like uh, ube swaminatha ayer who went from village to village to collect manuscripts like that in maharashtra everywhere you've had some individuals totally committing and dedicating themselves to ensure that this is not lost forever and in that league there are several individuals you can come up with i i was only a few days ago fortunate to talk with some people about indian philosophy and the set of books written by Su- surendranath banerji astonishing right a crystal clear talking about what indian philosophy <coughs> so if there are people uh, in tamil nadu bengal maharashtra these are individuals who sacrifice their time who what kind of returns did they get what kind of monetary benefits did they get but they went about it even then they were supported by great lot of uh, donors and it is through donors such institutions have really uh, carved out the service for the country and i do not want to expand on this but the work that you're doing the support that you're receiving 
I pray to God and all of us will do our little might to help that you are adequately funded for all the great work that you're doing. I thank the organizers and the uh, management for thinking that it is fit to call me to be with you all. I greatly admire this institution and I wish you very well. You should have several more centuries of seva to Bharat Mata. Thank you.